Hi everyone. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to do in part two of your videos for Monday is go back through the two um, top hat questions that were actually covered in the last section, but I forgot to tell you they're covered in the last section. So the first one is strong acids and strong bases. So if you go back to strong acids and strong bases, the question is when a strong acid or when strong acids are added, they fully dissociate, or in other words, the reaction goes to completion. This is a true or false question. So note that I wrote a strong acid that goes into water. What does it do? Well, fully dissociates. Okay, so you should be able to answer that question. And then weak acids and bases. If I put a weak base in solution, what's going to happen? Well, we talked about it a little bit, and we'll cover it a little bit more. Um, for sure, but you can already answer this question. So a weak acid partially dissociates. So if I put a base into solution, what's gonna happen? And I asked you to select all. So some OH minus is produced. That's gonna be true. You're gonna make some of it. The base fully reacts with water. Is that gonna be true or not? So if we think back to partially dissociation, is the base gonna fully react with water? Is the reaction going to go to completion? Did I say in the note that it would fully go or is it going to partially dissociate? So check back in the video if you really can't remember, but note that like it partially dissociates. So what does that mean? Is it going to completion? Think about that. The weak base is still present at equilibrium. So if we look back to our weak situation, which was this one, right? We had a weak acid, it reacted. We still had mostly a reactant left over. And we should have mostly the reactant left over because the definition of a weak acid, remember, is Ka less than one. So we're going to have reactants be favored. Okay, so those are the two top hat questions that we technically covered last time, but I forgot to explicitly point out. All right, on to new material. And I actually decided, um, because I was surprised the last video was 30 minutes long, um, that I'm not going to cover anything with pH. So I'm just going to finish 15.2. Okay. And there's a few more um, questions along with these things, okay? So um, you will have added topic questions that I'll go through as well. So I wanted to, we talked about in last video, the strength of acids and the relation to K. I wanted to talk about a few example reactions, looking at their Ka and kind of determining the strength of the acid based on the Ka values. So, <clears throat> want to think about what a K value, so we left this off saying K less than one for weak acids is true, right? So what does a Ka less than one really mean? Well, it means that most of the acid stays protonated, or most of it stays as the reactants. Most of the acid stays protonated. Okay. So we can look at the Ka values for weak acids. We don't typically talk about Ka's for strong acids just because they're really, really big numbers because the reaction basically goes to completion, right? So you're talking about like a giant freaking number. Um, that doesn't mean you can't give a Ka for a strong acid. It just means that we typically um, don't talk about them or if we do talk about them, just know that they're really large numbers. Okay, so what's the strongest of these weak acids? And this is, a top hat question. So I want to look at these and look at all of these Ka values and then tell me which one is the strongest. So all of my Ka values are listed here. I have acetic acid, formic acid, and hydrofluoric acid. All of these are weak acids. You can see the chemical equations. The Ka values that I have to compare are 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth, 1.77 times 10 to the negative fourth, and 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. So right away, probably what you're going to do when you look at this equation or this question is ask, what's my biggest number? And maybe you'll say, what's my smallest number? Right? So these are the two extremes. We should um, be able to cross off that 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth, because we know it would be that one. So is my Ka value supposed to be 
bigger if it's a stronger acid or if it's supposed to be smaller. So let's think about what Ka means. If I have a small Ka, that means my reactants are favored. The more my reactants are favored, the less H plus is going to be produced. All right, so let's say that one more time. The more my reactants are favored, the farther it stays over to the left, the less H plus that I'm gonna make. So if I make a smaller amount of H plus, I have an even weaker acid. Okay, so if we think about what's a strong weak acid, we should have the largest K value. So in this situation, it's gonna be our hydrofluoric. And once again, that is a top hat question, so please uh, check that out, okay? Let's talk more about strength of a base in relation to K, so it's similar. The stronger the base, the more OH it will make, just like with an acid, the stronger the acid, the more H plus it's going to make. So, let's write that generic base equation again. We have B, aqueous, and this time I'm gonna leave it a neutral base. So you can see that it is, doesn't matter what the charges are. So liquids in equilibrium with BH plus, aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. Okay, I wanna write my KB expression for that or my um, equilibrium expression for a base reaction, which is called a KB. That's gonna be my concentration of BH plus products OH minus over reactants concentration B. And remember we don't include H2O because it is a liquid. Strong bases that I want you to memorize and you do have to memorize them so you know how to do your pH calculations appropriately. Strong bases are LiOH, NaOH, KOH, CaOH, calcium hydroxide. The KBs for all of these are going to be much, much greater than one. Right? These are going to be really big KBs, just like strong acids had really big KAs. I'm going to highlight these in blue because I want you to memorize these. If I'm a weak base, just like if it was a weak acid, a weak base. is a KB value less than one. So if we want to think about what is the strongest of these weak bases, then we're going to look at what has the largest KB value, just like we looked at which one was the strongest of the acids. In this situation, we're looking at which one is the strongest of the weak bases. So this is again a top hat question, okay? We have ammonium, aniline, dimethylamine, and I give you the values for all of those. So what we're looking for is what's my largest number. If the KB that is the largest has the largest um, or will produce the most amount of OH because it's making the most products and that's our product is OH minus. So in this situation what the answer is going to be is that 5.9 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now if I asked you what the weakest of these weak bases is that would be that, right? 4.0 times 10 to the negative 10, or just what the smallest number is. That's the weakest of the weak bases. You're not forming very much OH at all. I'm gonna actually make a note of that. Weakest, because not forming very much. OH minus. Okay, so let's talk about conjugate acid base pairs next. Um, acids form, forgot the M, conjugate bases, <laughs> excuse the typos in this, when they donate a proton, and bases form conjugate acids when they accept a proton. So if I want to think about how I pair up my conjugate acids with my base, if I were to look at a reaction of OH minus plus H3O plus it's going to form two H2O 
Well, what's my base in this equation? Base. And then H3O plus is acting as my acid. I know I need to have both a conjugate, ace, ba conjugate acid and a conjugate base, but what's kind of cool about water is that it can act both as a conjugate acid as well as a conjugate base, right? I can form OH minus, but I can also form H3O plus. So I'm gonna write these out separately so that you can see that one of them is my conjugate acid. And we would write that paired up with the base. And the other one is my conjugate base. And write that one paired up with the acid. So what happened to my OH minus? gained a proton from H3O plus and formed H2O. So that's why it's that pair. Then the other thing that happened is H3O plus lost a proton to become H2O. And it's paired with that one. Let's go through a few more examples of these. These conjugate acid base pairs. So if I look at HCl plus H2O is in equilibrium. We have H3O plus plus Cl minus. Well, what's acting as my acid? What's my proton donor? The proton donor in this situation is my HCl. So this is my acid. What's paired with that acid or what? So if we think about if that's my acids, acids form conjugate bases when they donate a proton. So this donated my proton and it formed a conjugate base. It's going to be the species that is whatever I started with minus the proton, right? So my Cl minus is my conjugate base. You could also say that in this equation, H2O is your base, and then H3O plus is your conjugate acid. I'm just going to highlight the acid and the conjugate base in this situation. So what's nice is that we can identify each player like I kind of just talked about, right? You're always going to have something acting as an acid and something else acting as a base because what you're doing here is throwing a proton back and forth, right? Essentially the acid says, hey base, would you like a proton? The base is all like, yeah, bro, throw it over here. And they're like, I'm going to throw you a proton. And the base is like, thanks, I got it. And then it might be like, oh, maybe I want to throw it back to you. But in the case of HCl, that's a strong acid. So HCl really likes to throw the ball, but it doesn't like to take it back, okay? And actually, that's a, that is a strong acid, so I shouldn't have an equilibrium arrow. I apologize. That should just be a straight arrow. Okay, let's do another example. One more, okay? So let's do HBr, strong. plus H2O is going to go Br minus plus H3O plus. Okay, so I wrote this out. Where's my acid? Where's my base? Where's my conjugate acid? Where's my conjugate base? We should be able to identify all of these things in the equation. So HBr is acting as my acid. It's donating a proton to H2O. H2O gains a proton to become H3O. Plus, so this is my base. HBr lost that proton to become Br minus. This is the conjugate base of HBr. And the base H2O gained a proton to become H3O plus. So this is my conjugate acid. You can think of them as being paired again together, right? We have our, con our acid and our conjugate base, and then our base with our conjugate acid. That's how they pair up that color coordinated um, that I show. You can, um, just on a side note, which one's a stronger acid? If we were to think about HBr or H3O plus, you may intuitively know that HBr is a stronger acid, or you may know that because I put it in your list of strong acids, and I have not said that H3O plus is a strong acid. HBr is your stronger 
acid. But if you didn't know that, you could look at the um, Ka value for the two acids, right? And you could pick whichever was your bigger one. You can also um, think about the strengths of conjugate acid-base pairs. So in this situation, HBr is my acid, and that's a strong acid. So it's going to produce a really weak conjugate base, meaning that it's not going to push the reaction back in the other direction very strongly at all. Um, and we know that um, for this reaction, it goes almost entirely to completion. So you should also know like, that that results in a pretty big K value. right? If I have a big K value in one direction, I'm going to have a small K value in the opposite direction. Because remember, if we're taking the reverse reaction, so if I flip it, it's one over that K value. And say this had a K value. I know sometimes it's hard to talk through math. But K, um, I'm going to make this up. So K made up equals 1,000, right? If I flip the reaction and I make H3O my acid, and I'm trying to figure out K flipped, remember that's one over 1,000, which is a really small number. Nah. Small number. Okay, so this is how we can tell the relative strengths of um, conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. Um, let's actually talk through a top hat question right now. So I ask you a question in top hat about conjugate acid base pairs, and I say select all true statements for the following reaction. And I give you H2PO4 minus reacting with H2O um, to form H3O plus an HPO4 2 minus. So this it's donating a single proton in this reaction in your top hat question. I want you to select all of the true statements. So H2PO4 is it acting as an acid? Is it donating a proton? That would mean it's acting as an acid. Is H2O acting as a base? I don't know, is it accepting a proton? Because then it would be acting as a base. So H3O plus a conjugate base, and then HPO4 2 minus is that conjugate acid. So what I want you guys to do here is just like I wrote out these before, these, both of these are examples of strong acids reacting with water to form um, a conjugate acid as well as a conjugate base. So select all that apply here. Um, all that you need to do is replace HBr with HPO4, right? And when, oh, and minus, sorry. And then reacting with water, and it's gonna form stuff. So make sure that you can answer those questions. Um, and that is your last top hat question for um, Wednesday. The last thing that I wanna talk about in our notes today is the relative strength of conjugate acids and bases. So what is true is that if we have a strong acid, we have a weak conjugate base. Look, for the reasons I just talked about, right? K made up and then K flipped, um, if we think about reversing the reaction there. So strong acids equals weak conjugate base. And if I have a strong base, That means I'm going to have a weak conjugate acid. So let's look over to the chart on the left for a second here and think about strong acids and very weak bases. <laughs> so if I have HCl, like I did above right here, right there, there we go. So in this question, what I showed was HCl being my acid and then my conjugate base. My conjugate base is going to be really, really weak. It's not going to be strong enough to then rip away um, an, a hydrogen from H3O and push the backwards reaction. This is going to always be true because if I have a strong acid, what's going to want to happen is the reaction goes almost all the way, if not all the way, to completion, right? That's what it means to be a strong acid. So the reverse reaction is not going to be favored at all. 
we're not gonna make very many of our reactants or we're not gonna end up with very many of our reactants. And we also saw that in the charts that I showed you where it's like strong made a ton of products, but then weak had mostly our reactants left. If we think, however, about strong bases that we are familiar with, so let's go down to the bottom. OH minus and H2O, what this means is we're gonna, we have a really strong base of OH minus, but then H2O is a pretty weak, um, is a weak conjugate acid, okay? So it's not going to be forming very much of your OH minus. The OH minus is going to be reacting um, and producing lots of H2O. Okay. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Next time we will get into 15.3. pH, what is it anyway? Um, so that is it for your notes for today. Uh, I hope you all are doing well and staying safe um, and not getting too bored. Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, but come to the group work, please. I like to see your faces or come to my office hours if you have any problems with anything, okay? Happy to help anytime, don't hesitate to email. Um, just because we're online doesn't mean I'm not here. I'm always here. Okay, bye.